Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate Wednesday in the octave of Corpus Christi, and we also today remember as a church St. Paulinus of Nola. St. Paulinus was born in 352 at Bordeaux in present-day France. He was from a noble senatorial family, and at some time during his boyhood, he made a visit to the shrine of St. Felix at Nola near Naples in Italy. Gratian made Paulinus a council at Rome in 377 and appointed him governor of the southern Italian province of Campania in 380. Paulinus noted the companion's devotion to St. Felix of Nola and built a road to Nola for the pilgrims as well as a hospice for the poor near the local shrine. Paulinus then went to Milan to attend the school of St. Ambrose. Around 384, he returned back to Bordeaux. Then he married Teresia, a Christian noblewoman from Barcelona. He was baptized by Bishop Delphinus at Bordeaux, and he and his wife traveled to the Iberian Peninsula around 390, when they lost their only child eight days after birth. So then they decided to withdraw from the world and live a secluded and religious life. In about 394, after some resistance on his part, Paulinus was ordained a priest on Christmas Day by Lampius, who was the bishop of Barcelona. Paulinus refused to remain in Barcelona, though, and in late spring of 395, he and his wife moved from the Iberia Pen Iberian Peninsula to Nola in Campania, where he remained until his death. Paulinus credited his conversion to Christianity to St. Felix, who was buried in Nola, and each year he would beautifully write a poem in honor of the saint. He and Teresia also rebuilt a church commemorating St. Felix. During these years, Paulinus did a lot of dialogue with St. Jerome, whom we know translated the Bible into the Vulgate of Latin about monastic topics. And he also decided to invest his money for the poor and the church rather than rejecting it completely. Teresia died sometime between 408 and 410, and shortly after, Paulinus received ordination to bis bishop. Around 410, he was also chosen as Bishop of Nola, where he served for 20 years. He spent a great deal of his money on his chosen church, city, and ritual, and he died on June 22nd of 431. So St. Paulinus, for your holiness of life and readiness to take the faith to new levels and to new people, we ask you to please, please pray for us today. So let us begin in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. My dear brothers and sisters, let's take a moment and confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidier, which is on page 66, if you're following along. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to do one act of kindness for someone else sometime today. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you nourished your people with food of angels and furnished them bread from heaven, ready to hand, untoiled for, endowed with all delights and conforming to every taste. For the substance of yours revealed your sweetness toward your children, and serving the desire of him who received it was blended to whatever flavor each one wished. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in this wondrous sacrament you left us as a memorial of the passion and death of your Son, Jesus, <coughs> may we who so reverence his body and blood perceive within ourselves the effects of his redemption. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. The high priest Hilkiah informed the scribe Shaphan I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, who read it. <coughs> then the scribe Shaphan went to the king and reported, Your servants have smelted down the metals available in the temple and have consigned them to the master workmen in the temple of the Lord. The scribe Shaphan also informed the king that the high priest Hilkiah had given him a book, and then he read it aloud to the king. <clears throat> when the king heard the contents of the book of the law, he tore his garments and issued this command to Hilkiah the priest. Akim, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Mikalah, scribe Shaphan, and the king's servant Asiah, go, consult the Lord for me, for the people, for all of Judah, about the stipulations of this book that has been found. For the anger of the Lord has been set furiously ablaze against us <coughs> because our fathers did not obey the stipulations of this book nor fulfill our written obligations. The king then had all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem summoned together before him. The king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, priests, prophets, and all the people, small and great. He had the entire contents of the book of the covenant that had been found in the temple of the Lord read out to them. Standing by the column, the king made a covenant before the Lord that they would follow him and observe his ordinances, statutes, and decrees with their whole hearts and souls, thus reviving the terms of the covenant which were written in the book. And all the people stood as participants in the covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Give me discernment, that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Lead me in the path of your commands, for in it I delight. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to gain. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Turn away my eyes from seeing what is vain. By your way you give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your justice, give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips. I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Just so, every good tree bears good fruit, and a rotten tree bears bad fruit. Nor a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a rotten tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So by their fruits you will know them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our first reading, which is from the second book of Kings, may be kind of curious if we approach it at first glance. Because the high priest Hilkiah suddenly finds the book of the law, the law that shaped the entire nation of Israel. And that means they had been lost or buried or put away somewhere where no one was looking for it. And as we've been hearing throughout this saga in the second book of Kings, that the people, both the leadership and the people in general of Israel and Judah have been going farther and farther and farther away from the Lord because they have ignored and forgotten God's covenant with them. And here now we have the book reappearing. And what is that book? What did they find? They found the book of Deuteronomy, which is the oldest part of the Old Testament that was written down. It may not be the oldest part chronologically, but it's the oldest part written down and not just passed on verbally. That changes the king's purview completely. He does a 180, complete reversal. And he realizes right away upon hearing the contents of that book that they've got to change and change immediately. They have to renew the covenant. What are those, co what, what are those laws? There's the Ten Commandments, my brothers and sisters, the Ten Commandments. Shall have no other gods besides me. Keep holy the Sabbath. Honor your father and mother. Shall not kill, shall not commit adultery, so on, so forth, so forth. Yes. <laughs> so does that tell us that that society at that time was breaking all ten. They are breaking all ten of the commandments. And the time of reckoning had come because God was punishing them doing so and now they knew why so the king goes up to the temple where they had already desecrated it by melting down all of the sacred ornaments he ordered them to be the workmen to redo them and he read out the law to the people and renewed the covenant with God and we'll see how that plays out then and then we hear from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus tells us, Beware of false prophets come in sheep's clothing, but underneath are wolves. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Sometimes wolves in shepherd's clothing as well. By your, their fruits, you will know them. Well, that relates to the kings that ignored and forgot the covenant with God. It also relates to us all the way down to today. There's always going to be people who will use God, who will use Jesus, who will use the church for their own ends. By their fruits, we will know them. By their fruits, we will know them. It's no secret to some of you that I was in seminary in Boston when everything broke back in 2002, January 6th to be exact, when the first article showed up in the Boston Globe. And it was tragic. It was 
earth-shattering, if you will. Pe as time went on, people I knew were not only being accused, but admitting to doing some of the most heinous things to some of the most vulnerable people. And then I also found out that I had an early encounter with someone of that nature. A, an assistant priest at the parish I grew up in, South Bend, Indiana, was praying on people while I was there, some of which just ascertaining by the dates and the ages of the unnamed victims were my classmates, people I knew. And I was refl over the years, I've reflected on that. What Father James Bloom, CSC, did. Um, and I remember a point where he would pull people out of class to talk to them and take them over to the rectory and chat. And I was one that was pulled out. Nothing happened to me. And we chatted for a little bit. He asked about my family. I told him about my mother and my father and what they did. And he gave me a soda and went back to class afterwards. No harm, no foul. But he would do that regularly to the boys in the class. And turns out some of them were for nefarious purposes. Most of them who came from broken homes. They were vulnerable. Very vulnerable. Second grade, third grade. And that, my brothers and sisters, is an example of a false prophet who comes in shepherd's clothing, but is a ravenous, ravenous wolf. He went on to be moved and do the same thing in other places. I believe he's, I know he's out of the priesthood, I don't know if he's in jail at the current moment or not. But the story repeats itself and repeats itself and repeats itself and repeats itself and repeats itself. Why? Why? Because of pride. The first of the capital sins, the deadliest of the deadly sins. Pride is me saying I'm better than God. I know better than he does. I know better than his laws. That it was pride that brought down Israel when the kings ignored the book of the law and forgot about it. It's pride that puts the wolves in the shepherd's clothing to prey on the vulnerable. It's pride. We must avoid pride. And all the other capital sins as well, but they all stem from pride, don't they? Even Adam and Eve in the garden wanted to be like God. Pride. So my brothers and sisters, What's the antidote? Humility. Be humble before God. If I humble, I don't mean a false humility degrading ourselves. No, honestly assessing ourselves. Our strengths and weaknesses. Build on the strengths and shore up the weaknesses. And by above all, put God first and foremost in our lives. Love of God, love of neighbor, love of self. Third. We come in third, my brothers and sisters, okay? Individually. But others come in second, God comes in first. Love God's love to others, and through that, we will find why we were created to love in a positive way, helping others also to be the best they can be without regard for our own sufferings what it means to lay down one's life for one's friend. It's not e always to death. It's in other ways, too. We can die a little bit every day, but if we do it for so someone else or for God, what a great, great thing that is. So my brothers and sisters, let us humble ourselves before God. If we have sinned, confess it, repent, receive absolution, and get up and turn our lives around and spread God's love to everyone we meet, the good news to everyone we meet, then we will find our true happiness in doing that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's now turn to page 71 and say together the creed that unites us as Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Confident in God's loving care, we, re we place our petitions before him. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let the church which draws her life from the Eucharist may worship this mystery with ever deeper faith and devotion. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that the sacrificial love of Christ may inspire them to protect the dignity and sanctity of all human life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on all fathers, that they may be affirmed and strengthened in their calling to give themselves in love to their families, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the lonely, and the grieving, that they may find consolation through Christ's abiding presence, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts, And for all those who have been harmed by wolves in shepherd's clothing, that they may find peace and beauty in God once again, which is our intention for this Mass, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and those who will die today, that they be given a place at the heavenly banquet, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear our prayers and grant us what we truly need, May we grow in our deep appreciation of the Eucharist and be more open to sharing the presence of Christ with one another. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth is given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. The mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. May it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. 
receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Gracious Father, grant your church unity in Christ and peace with you. May we who present these gifts to you live, in accord, live according to the spirit of the gospel and come to know eternal life. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. At the Last Supper, as he sat at table with his apostles, he offered himself to you as the spotless lamb, the acceptable gift that gives you perfect praise. Christ has given us this memorial of his passion to bring us its saving power until the end of time. When we receive the bread of heaven, we are nourished and strengthened by our Lord to live it in holiness and righteousness. We come then to your table to be filled with this wonderful sacrament to gr and grow into the likeness of the risen Christ. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy sacrifice, the mass continues with Eucharistic prayer 3, which is found on page 84, if you are following along. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, he taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners' freedom, the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you together. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The 
bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. God, that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, Jerry, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth, especially those who were harmed by wolves in shepherd's clothing. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone, especially our friends and family members who have passed. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Paulinus of Nola, whose memory we keep today, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord, Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Join me now in the First Communion Prayer on page 97. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever.
This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the sacrament of the altar, the pledge of your love for us, move us to long for eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And may do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's join me now in prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me so love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for our Holy Mass today. We pray that you can join us on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Although we will not be having Mass tomorrow, um, we will be having it Friday and Saturday instead. So we pray that you have a beautiful day. Stay safe. Stay cool. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remain in the state of grace. Fight evil whenever and wherever you find it. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, <coughs> early in the morning, a song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. <coughs> <coughs>